Okay, back to Okinawa by Tiny Battle Publications. We are in step five now, the U.S. combat phase. The U.S. player engages in combat. The Japanese player may deploy defensive reserves. However, as one of the special rules of this scenario, the Japanese player may not use reserves or artillery. So, going right into combat. Combat's always voluntary, performed between units and adjacent hexes. Um, first thing we do, we're going to be looking at combat number one here. Um, let's see. The attacker indicates his attacking units and the defending hex involved. We have a Marine Regiment here, a Marine Regiment here, and they will be engaging the Japanese unit um, right there. Eh, that was nice and clumsy. It is in a town, so it will get the benefit of a town. During the U.S. attacks, the Japanese player can commit defensive reserves. Well, as I said before, they have none. Total the attack strength of the attacking units and divide it by the total defense strength uh, to determine the combat ratio. Attack and defense strengths can be modified by terrain. Ratios are expressed in an attacker to defender form and rounded down in favor of the defender. So what we basically have um, is the first number is the combat value on the attack, the second number is the value on the defense, and of course the final number on the bottom is the movement points. So we have 8 and 8, that's going to be 16 versus 8, which would normally be a 2 to 1, however the Japanese unit here uh, is entrenched. So he gets 8 times 2 is 16. So right now we're looking at a 1 to 1. Then we have the efficiency. Let's see. The attacker commits artillery, air, and naval support markers to the combat. Each support marker can be used only once per combat phase. The defender then commits artillery, air, and naval support markers. No more than one naval support marker can be used in each combat. So we are going to have here... The U.S. player is going to commit the Idaho, and this is his um, support modifier. It's going to be a plus two. We are also going to commit um, these two Marine artillery units with support um, die roll modifiers of two and two. That's four. We'll use the Marine Air Group unit in a close air support. That's going to be another one. And we have two tanks here. One's a three, and the other, I believe, is a three. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We have thirteen support points or die roll modifiers. Okay. The Japanese player has none. All he gets is the town that he is setting in, so that's a minus one. I guess what I'm saying is he has no support points. So he gets the town, which is a minus one DRM, for a total of plus 12 dice roll, modif die roll modifiers for the US player. Okay, let's see what else we do. Total the DRMs for the attacker and defender to determine the net DRM. I've done that. It's 13 minus 1 is 12. Roll the die, modify the result, and apply the combat effects. We have efficiency, which I haven't added into it yet. The attacker selects one unit as the lead unit. This unit will contribute its efficiency rating as a positive DERM to the die roll. The defender selects one of his units as a lead defending unit, and he contributes... Uh, his ER as a negative DRM. Subtract the two to find the total. Um, the American player is going to, I know it's going to be extremely hard to read this. I apologize for that. Um, 
but you have to trust me that this marine unit has a five and the Japanese unit has a four. So that's going to be another plus one DRM. So now the U.S. player has 14 DRM. Train um, can either give a shift left or it can uh, provide a, D a favorable DRM to the unit. So did I include that yet? Minus one. I think I did. Well, anyway, we'll go with plus 14. In case I didn't, I'll knock it down to plus 13. It's not going to make any difference. It, we will be using the uh, maximum die roll on the chart. Okay, then we have the support from tanks, artillery, air, and naval. And all they do is provide a positive or negative bonus to the combat. And this is more DRMs. Then we have the extreme ratios. The leftmost and rightmost columns of the combat table list the highest and lowest attacking odds. When calculating the basic ratio before applying eventual terrain shifts, any attacking any attack lower than 1 to 2 will use the 1 to 2 column. Any attack higher than 8 to 1 will use the 8 to 1 column. If terrain shifts move the column beyond the CRT, um, you'll just add DRMs <coughs> to those uh, maximum and minimum odds. <coughs> All right, so we have 1 to 1 combat. Let's see if I can get this without... So I'm hosing it up too badly. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Let's see, the ship combat. So let's just go over here. Let's see if we can get to the CRT here without too much trouble. Okay, there's going to be lots of trouble. Okay, so we're going to be on the one-to-one -one column. That's going to put us down here. Now there are only, um, it goes from minus one to eight as far as the die roll goes, and it is a D6 die roll system. So what I'm going to do, there are no column shifts for terrain, it's just a modifier. So we are going to roll the die. We get a one without any kind of uh, support bonuses. It would be two losses for the attacker plus a disruption. I'm not sure. I think it's a disruption. And then there would be nothing for the defender. However, we're going to add 14 or 13 to the die roll or 12, whatever. Even if you add more than 10, it's going to take it down to a one slash 1R, which means the attacker will take one step loss from any unit involved in the combat. It must be the lead unit first, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the defender will take a step loss and will be forced to retreat. Let's go back over here to that combat. It's somewhere close to it. Combat 2. I want Combat 1. There we go. Alright. <clears throat> so, Eek. Well, that was kind of a disaster. Uh, just dropped my um, <clears throat> player aid on the map and knocked a few counters around, but anyway, I'm just showing this as an example. Alright, so what do we have? The attacker has to lose one step. So he's basically going to take this unit off the lead unit, I'm sorry. This was the lead unit. So he goes from an 8, 8, 5 to a 4, 5, 5 with a efficiency of 4 now. He doesn't have to retreat or anything. However, the defender has to take a step loss, the Japanese unit. Let's see here. 
my old arthritic hands can, uh, let's see, should be up here, can grab these calendars. And like I said, they're kind of sticky, so that doesn't help me any. So he takes a step loss, and now he must retreat. Let's get some of these other support units out of the way. And he is under this uh, entrenchment. He does have a path open, and he is obligated to <clears throat> retreat towards 32nd Army Headquarters, which is located right here. So basically, he has to just move down to the south part of the map. Um, he's not surrounded by zones of control. So he can retreat one hex into the uh, uh, rough or mountainous terrain, whichever one it is. Uh, hills. <clears throat> well, that was close. Anyway, he retreats into the hills. I believe the uh, fortification will be removed, and these guys get to advance the one hex, thereby destroying the fortification. And... That is pretty much how combat is resolved. Uh, let's see. Find out which unit was involved in the combat here. Well, I think it was him. Anyway, close enough because he was over here, not adjacent. So, that's pretty much how combat is resolved. Total up your odds. Um, add any modifiers for being in train. Throw in all your support points and um, roll a die and add the uh, die roll modifiers. In my mind, the die roll modifiers are, I mean, you add any artillery, you add any air or naval, and you're going to push the uh, result clear to the uh, bottom of the chart. So either I'm doing something wrong or uh, the modifier system is a little wacky. But that's neither here nor there. That is an example of combat. Uh, for the US player, we will be back for Japanese movement, Japanese reserve, and Japanese combat. Uh, that'll be the next video. Catch you later.